Hey everyone, my name is Strive Hereath, and welcome to the first video in my Dungeon Master series for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This video is primarily for new Dungeon Masters, people looking to uh, start a new group, probably with primarily new players. This is for Session Zeros. I will be doing other videos on house rules, uh, other videos explaining certain rules that are maybe complicated for first-time DMs or first-time players. But this one is primarily focusing on what we call Session Zero. Session Zeros are usually made up by the Dungeon Master as kind of a pre-campaign warm-up. For newer players being thrown into a campaign, either homebrewed, which is something that you make up yourself, or one of the pre-made um, pre ones, like the ones I have behind me, can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, there is a lot of information. Dungeons & Dragons is a really fun game, but there's a lot to learn. Once you get the ball rolling, it's pretty easy, but character creation is very difficult. I will go over that in another video. But um, again, Session Zeros are your warm-up. Getting players the ability to actually play without the pressure of a long, complicated plot line. So what I usually like to do after everyone sat down either the session after character creation or the same session uh, session depending on how long it takes you to you know make characters get everyone settled is I make up uh, previously a small campaign something that only maybe take an hour or so depending and just letting my characters run through it you know um, kind of what we'd call um, a railroad which is one direction you know, don't don't give them too much leeway. Inform this is just a warm up. This is just you know, uh, an adventure with the training wheels on. Usually, they're you know excited to play, just making up their first character, so they don't really care so much that it's a straight story and they can't explore so much. So, what I found I like to do is throw in a little bit of everything that they would probably see within the first or second level you know not everything but things that they would see uh, an example I give and one I've run a couple times for my session zero is an easy little one shot in a town so the plot hook again I'll go over another video is just that your players have each through different means which you can allow them to explain on more themselves if they want to especially if they're an RP heavy group or wanting to be an RP heavy group or just saying through your travels in your hometown you've heard that this city uh, the city name that I use is Greenbrier Greenbrier has been plagued by a small band of goblins Goblins are always a great starter enemy. They are relatively weak, low hit points, decent armor class, but usually can't go wrong starting with goblins. So Greenbrier has been nuisanced by some goblins. You, their players have seen notices in surrounding towns, or villages, what have you, and they have all arrived at the city of Greenbrier. Well, it's more of a town. Village. Small. You know, ten houses or less. Farming village. They show up. They are instructed to meet the leader of the town. You can use whatever name you want to. Mayor. I use um, spokesman. Sound a little bit more village -y to me. So, you, they have, uh, you have to meet the spokesman in the tavern. You gotta meet at the tavern or the inn or the pub. So, you meet at the tavern, uh, they arrive separately together if they're players in your group who have backstories that are separated, then that would be an awesome time 
to have them kind of start incorporating that. So they start having this discussion with the headmaster, or I'm sorry, the spokesman. And depending on how long the conversation is going, one you know, one or two things may happen, but they have this conversation. They offer each person a set amount of gold. Um, could be five, ten, whatever it is you feel comfortable with. Remember, these are level one players. It's not a great idea to throw gold at them heavily at the beginning. You know, kind of get them like any video game where you know you start out getting one gold at a time. I use five. I think five's a good starter gold amount. Use five gold each person for successfully defeating this goblin incursion. Um, the goblins that I used, the setup was that the goblins had taken over an old farmstead uh, outside of town through some farmland, uh, through a small patch of forest, and there's the abandoned farmhouse. So uh, another kind of, I guess, hook you could use is if they're taking a while, they're discussing if they've already accepted it. Um, what I one thing I used is uh, an abduction that kind of add a little bit of urgency to it, you know, because you can set them coming into the village anytime you want to, morning, night, whatever, what kind of, whatever you think would be interesting, you know, you could have them come in at night and this happened, the, what happened is an abduction, um, mother with the child, mother doing laundry, farming, whatever it is she, you want her to do, child is abducted by goblins. If you want it to happen at nighttime, I mean, that's, you know, that's urgent, and it would uh, make the players kind of have to go through a night scenario, which can be interesting. It could happen in the middle of the day, it could happen in the morning, whatever you want to. I wouldn't put the farmhouse any more than 45 minutes to an hour away. Nothing too crazy, you know, not, if, you know, they come in the morning, it's something they can do in the afternoon, they come in the afternoon, it's something they could do before nightfall or something they don't have to worry about. That's what I usually do is afternoon. That way, the threat of nightfall is kind of looming. Um, you don't have to use the abduction thing. I liked it. Um, like I said, it gave a little bit more urgency. I've had my players, you know, they sit there and they discuss in the tavern. They can go around and around and around. And then, you know, I just kind of wait. I'm like, okay, maybe the session's lagging a little bit, you know. And then, boom. Mother comes in screaming that they've taken their child. Um, so, you know, usually at that point, the players jump up and give chase. You can say any amount of time has passed between this, maybe a couple minutes. So um, they run outside and, you know, maybe with a, this would be a good time to start rolling like perception checks or investigation checks if they're if they go to the scene of the crime first or you know if they somebody rolls a really high perception especially like a natural 20 you can say that they see off in the distance a little trail of green maybe they hear a scream of a child and they all go across this farmland now you can have them catch up to this in the woods if you want to no issue with that i I left that as an option, but my players, before, some of my players before, haven't really hustled too much. You know, they were like, okay, well, it, you, this is kind of a good opportunity for you to get them used to saying things like we run or we dash or, you know, get them to play in real time. So, you know, don't, tell, you know, if, if you want to, you can say something like, are you running or, you know, what are you doing? How fast are you going? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you have them take maybe say five minutes to traverse at a sprint, um, or at least a good run from the town through the farmland to reach the woods. Once they reach the woods, this is a good opportunity to use something like difficult terrain, where their speed is halved or slowed. Um, this is an abandoned farmhouse. It's not looking like um, you know, it, it makes sense that it would be more difficult, especially since you're going through a wooded area. Uh, probably not much of a trail. The goblin isn't slowed quite as much because they're accustomed to going in and out. This is each player's first time being there. Unless one of the players says they're from that village and 
you allow that to work in, in which case, that's great. Then maybe you can have them go, especially if they're a ranger, maybe you can have them go um, a little bit faster, or if the ranger has a, uh, what, level one, no. So, um, if you want them to catch up with them, if they can, maybe do some skill checks to see if they can actually make it to them. If not, that's fine. I, I didn't, I was kind of happy that they didn't. It allowed me to do something else I was kind of thinking about later on. Um, so they're going through the forest. They're slowed down, most likely. At this point, you can, um, if you have any experienced players, they'll probably ask, you know, for perception checks or investigation checks or something, or survival checks. Um, this is a good way maybe you can explain and walk through the differences between them and maybe what you should be looking for. Um, in the forest, I put a, a simple snare. Um, you know, they step on it, usually like a DC 10 perception check. You know, these aren't anything crazy. This goblins, you know, but like a DC 10 perception check. Um, I, you can say something like, active perception, unless the person in front is actively looking for it, in which case they actually have to make that perception check, ask them to roll it. If they're just running flat out, whoever's in front, ask them what the percep passive perception, explain what passive perception is, and if there's just lower than 10, you can set the DC as high as you want to. I just set it to 10, because I had a lot of first-time players the last time I ran this. So I just set it to 10, which means their passive perception caught it. Um... Even if the passive perception catches it, you can make it to where it's, say, in the middle of the road, something that the goblin, you know, at this point managed to set behind him right quick. It was already there, but he just, you know, set the trap. Um, have them roll a skill check to see if they can disarm it. If you have a rogue, you know, yes. If not, then you say you can set, try to disarm it or go around it if they want to try to disarm it. Unless they're a rogue, I'll probably have them do it at disadvantage, maybe if they're a ranger, a straight roll, um, just for them to see d advantage, disadvantage, the benefits of, you know, taking certain skill sets, and also the consequences of failing a roll. So, uh, my last party failed the roll to disarm it, the rogue did, and was caught in, caught in the snare. So, they got brought about 10 feet up in the air. Um, luckily it was a very tall party member with them so it was just a matter of that party member holding them while they come down not an issue but it allowed time for the goblin to get away and it gave the party a sense of you know okay there are things out here that we have to watch out for now so that was very interesting so they travel through the woods they uh, eventually you can kind of describe maybe the woods are thinning out a little bit. Um, you see, the, you want to ask them, you don't want to slow down. You may be getting closer to, you know, or have them roll a survival check or perception or whatever. See, and hopefully they'll realize that they might be getting close to the end of the woods. And if they slow down, um, at the end of the woods, kind of at the border, I put a sleeping goblin. Goblins are lazy. You know, at this point, that kid's probably tired, given up, and probably wouldn't cause too much trouble. Goblin probably saw it, you know, got kicked in his sleep, uh, went back to sleep. So, this is a good time to uh, introduce stealth checks. Um, so, we had, um, in my party, a rogue and a barbarian sneak up on the goblin. Cool. They manage to sneak up to it. You know, I ask them, what do you want to do? They ask, you know, can we look past it? So, if they ask that, give them a general layout of what what's, uh, what the next area is. If not, if they don't ask that, you know, they'll probably want to... Very murder hobo -y, um first level players. You know, they especially goblins. No one feels bad about killing goblins, usually. So, uh, in my case, after the party asked if they could see what's coming next, which I explained to them, which I'll explain to you in a second, uh, they wanted to kill the goblin. I mean, he's asleep. So, I gave them, I gave the uh, barbarian advantage 
uh, on the attack roll. So I, uh, you know, said, okay, roll your attack with advantage because Goblin's asleep. So uh, he, uh, he rolled a, I want to say it was like a six and um, uh, a natural one. And so he failed. And um, he failed the first one with the six. Um, the goblin's armor class at level one is usually 15. Failed the roll. I allowed him one more shot as the goblin was waking up on a straight roll. Rolled another natural one. So I had his axe stick in the tree, which is... I usually I'll, I'll go over critical failures and successes and how you can manage that in a different video. But um, in my case, had him axe stuck to the tree. Luckily, the rogue was right there and rolled it and one shot him with a sneak attack. So, which allowed the rogue to kind of understand what sneak attack is a little bit and how that works. So that was good. So they dispatched the goblin. At this point, they definitely want to see you know what we see, what's around. Um, the way I put it. Next was um, the way I had this set up. This is the whole next area. Is one goblin pacing way, way over there, barely in uh, eyesight over this way. One way on the other side, on the opposite side, directly across from them. And uh, between them, a barn with kind of like an outside corral, um, usually you know um, stone wood. And then slightly behind that, they can see farmhouse. So, you see, they see this, they, uh, you know, ask them what they want to do, I kind of remind them about the sneaking, um, they roll stealth checks, they sneak up, uh, how many goblins you want to put in which locations, completely up to you, but these are level one characters, so they've only come across one and he was sleeping, so... You know, you could put one more out there. You could put two more out there. I probably wouldn't put any more than two. Just because one or two goblins, depending on how they roll and how you roll, can really mess them up. I mean, the first goblin, hopefully, they took out while he was asleep and everyone felt good about it. That next one, if there's any more than two, not only would it be hard if they want to continue sneaking along, which is what my group wanted, but it would be hard to do that with more than two. Um... But that's what I put too. Um, they went in. Two of the two of the people went off to the barn. Another one went to the side. He made some noise accidentally. They ran out. Luckily, they managed to kill them both in one shot. Lucky rolls. Um, like I said, how you want to do that is up to you. You could put one goblin in there, just doing whatever you want to. You know, this is if they're really. RP heavy, maybe you want him to do something like, I don't know, uh, going through there for goods, uh, maybe this is where they store food, or whatever it is, um, they could be out there taking a piss for all you know, so uh, that's completely up to you, um, you can roll perception checks for the two goblins that are way off in the distance, probably be a pretty high DC for being that far away, so... That's if you want to. Uh, I usually use that as more of like a looming threat. Um, not necessarily like an active thing, you know, unless they pursue it. It's something that, you know, try to keep them mindful of other things that may come into what they're doing. So, I kind of had that as just a looming threat. I didn't throw them in there immediately. Um, so, they dispatch however many goblins you put in the barn... They sneak up to the farmhouse itself. Um, you know, I have just a standard farmhouse. Maybe it's like a story and half a story. Kind of, like, you know, story attic with a loft or something like that. Uh, broken windows. Um, so, ha you know, how you can put however many goblins you want in there. Because this is, at this point, you may want to say, especially if they're taking damage in the other fight, if you put one or two or three, however many put goblins you want in there. Or if they went after the scouts. Um, then they probably are hurt, which would be a good time to introduce short rests and maybe discuss short rest, long rest, things like that. Um, I would allow them to take a short rest at this point if you know they're injured or if 
anybody has spells they want to cast, like uh, if you have a cleric or a druid or a bard, whoever in the party. Um, so uh, at this point, you know, have the whatever they is they want to do. if they want to bum rush the door and you know break in, probably put maybe like a DC ten strength check to break the door. Um, if you want, you know. They could, there's put windows around there. Don't put a window. Okay, so inside the house, put X amount of goblins, uh, however many you want to, put one goblin leader. So that goblin leader is probably going to have probably the same AC of 15, but maybe 10 or 12 health instead of 7, which is standard for a goblin. Um, don't put any windows accessible in the room you're going to put that goblin. Uh, other ones, if you know you have a couple ranged people in there, people, a wizard or a ranger, or whoever they want to, or a rogue or whoever has a ranged weapon, if they want to, you know, try to camp out the windows, let them do it. Um, you know, if they want to sit there and strategize for a little while, if they've taken out every single goblin, including the um, the the scouts, I guess you would call it the patrols, you know, let them take their time about this. Um, if not. Maybe start rolling a die to make them nervous. Um, you know, maybe they want to know why. No reason. And then, you know, kind of hint at the other goblins uh, patrolling everywhere. If you want to. If you kind of want to push things a little bit. Um, if they're taking 20 minutes to try to discuss what they're going to do with this thing. If if that's cool with you, which would be cool with me. Um, just, you know, if they want to take that time to discuss what they want to do next and whatnot. Especially if they take out the patrols, then... That's that. Um, if you use the hook for the little girl who got kidnapped, maybe gently remind them of that. Maybe time is kind of important because you don't know what the goblin's going to do to the kid. They might eat the kid for all you know. So you can hit that too. So at this point, if they want to bum rush the door, set maybe like a DC 15 strength check or athletic check, something like that. You know, if they want to camp out windows, let them decide what they're going to do. And then however they're going to execute it, execute it. Um, if you use the little girl plot hook I had a small goblin dressed up in an approximation of like a little girl, this is old farmstead so there's probably some old clothing laying around somewhere, so I had one of the goblins dress up as a little girl, you know uh, dress, uh, a bonnet, or hat covering them and uh, the leader at this, like, while they're fighting, you got the leader sent out, make directions, well, maybe not attack directly, um, but once your players start, you know, getting to it and things get pressured, have, you know, the little goblin um, be grabbed by the big goblin from the side, and that goblin, the leader, threaten to kill the little girl. Um, if they're close at this point, or if anybody wants to, um, you know, have them roll a perception check. If no one asks for perception or investigation check or anything like that, you know, again, these are new players probably, so it's okay to remind them as many times as you want to. Like, you can say something like, something seems off, or something seems odd, or something along that, those lines, and have them, you know, oh, can I roll a perception check on this? And then it's, I would give this a five, just like a, a difficulty of five to see if you know oh there's a green ear sticking out of the side of the hat you know so at this point you know they're probably gonna attack and they're gonna kill all the goblins goblins are dead um, again if you use a little girl hook little girl they find tied up in um, the, the room that I had the main goblin in was probably the master bedroom and it had access to kind of like a half second story loft kind of deal and they went up there and they found a little girl uh, you know a couple bruises on her maybe a cut on her tied up uh, you can leave whatever the goblins are going to do to her kind of ambiguous um, depending on how you're going to run the game you know you don't want to go too dark or too campy unless those are your styles so they find the little girl uh, also up there they find uh, a chest that is locked um, which you can finally, probably tell is where um you know, you can be like, oh, this is where the goblin, you know, had everything. Um, if you have a rogue, then, you know, allow them to check the, uh, the lock pick. This is level one, so I'll put DC of five or ten, whatever. I've had a DC of ten. Um, 
which my rogue rolled a three and a natural one on their two attempts, in which case I had the lockpick break in there and impossible to lock at that, unlock at that point, uh, which is no problem because we had a barbarian who just kind of, you know, made a really good strength check and ripped it open. But again, you know, these are your players' choices of how they want to do things. Um, so uh, in the chest, I had uh, they've been these goblins had been harrying uh, the townspeople, so that you're going to find food up to you how much of it's spoiled you know um if it's not a lot then you know when they bring it back or they inform the villagers the goblins are dead maybe more of a celebration for the adventurers um you know so you have that you find that around but in the chest itself you can put i put uh enough gold for 10 gold for each party member um, i'll go over it that's kind of like a a house rule in my house rules video I'll go over about gold distribution loot distribution stuff like that but you know enough gold for say 10 gold a piece you know so more gold than they got by taking the quest which will hopefully uh, encourage your people later on for you know we want to take these bosses down or maybe want to explore more you can have the chest hidden if you want to with an easy enough check maybe under a loose floorboard or in a corner over you know covered up or something like that um, give them kind of, you know, an exploration thing, especially if the campaign you're planning on running next is one of those where, you know, the more they explore, the better the reward, which is most campaigns. But, um, so they find the little girl, they open the chest, there's enough gold in there, maybe toss in, you know, a couple of decent weapons. Usually I don't give the players any weapons that the goblins were using, um, maybe some arrows if you keep track of that um, all the weapons they would use i would say would be very terrible quality rusty broken chips stuff like that but um in the unless you, you know maybe on the um, goblin chieftain the leader maybe one good weapon or you know um a piece of leather you know maybe in the chest maybe like a set of leather, leather armor like a regular set of leather armor which would be good for just a backup or maybe if you want to be real generous and you maybe you only have, uh, you know, roll, um, roll something. Maybe you can have, I wouldn't put anything magical in there at this point. Um, this is a session zero. So, uh, you know, something in there, maybe a piece of armor, a couple of weapons. I think I put a, a dagger, a couple short swords, maybe, um, if you have a barbarian or fighter or a paladin, something like that, who uses a, a great sword or a great ax or a maul, give them something that's, what they don't have you know you can set up a table roll and see who gets what you know if you have you know, multiple people use the same thing only put one in there see this is also a good opportunity for you, for you to feel out how your players are going to be as far as loot distribution you know if you say if you have a fighter a barbarian and a paladin and they're all using great swords and you put a, a maul in there See how they do with that. You know, are they going to fight over it, or are they? If they're calm and collected about how they distribute it, if they go, well, the fight. Let's give it to the fighter uh, because the fighter may be able to make better use of it, um, especially if somebody is more, you know, uh, experienced at the table. Maybe they go, oh, you know, it might be good for that or the other. And you just could be opportunity for you to explain to them the difference between like piercing damage, bludgeoning damage, whatnot. Maybe you might come across something that's resistant to it. Good time to talk about resistances if they don't know about it. So, but uh, at this point, yeah, it's a good point. That final chest is really good to see, you know, how they distribute loot. You could even put something like a healing potion if there if you wanted to and see if they're greedy, how they go for it. And that's going to really determine a lot of what you're going to have to do as a dungeon master either sitting to the side and talking to your players like hey you know it's because things like that can cause drama like in anything if you played like old school warcraft or something like that it's loot distribution can't always cause issues if it's become an issue inform them if there's an issue and i don't want any drama at my table then you know i will either put in something good that can be shared or i'm just going to put in you know nothing uh, or, you know, come to some kind of compromise. Remember, 
it's your table it's your rules you can bend the rules you can break the rules but at the end of the day uh, regardless of handbooks or you know who it can pull up online it's your table and your rules you know you don't have to be a dictator about it you can discuss you can reason you have you know discourse about it but you know if this is the way you run it run it that's it if they start fighting over something like that you know stop the session break the immersion say hey if you're gonna fight over stuff like this you know make a decision but that will impact what kind of gear loot money gems and all that kind of stuff you will get in the future or won't get in the future so uh, anyways like I said so they get the chest they rescue the girl whatever's in the chest is whatever you want to put in the chest um, they bring the, the girl back to the village and form the village you know here's the girl yay everyone's saved um, there's X amount of food left if you know that's one of the concerns was they were stealing food from the village um, so they've you've done that uh, the the leader of the village representative headmaster whoever mayor gives you your five gold apiece so at this point uh, all my last players that I played with had 15 gold apiece which is a good starting oh 15 gold on top of what they started with most people start with anywhere from 5 to 15 10 is usually the average at this point they have 25 gold at which case you can tell them you know they, they might start asking you know what can we buy you know 25 gold seem, might seem like a lot to a beginning player um, so you can go over you know, maybe you have a little shop in town maybe they can combine their if they're a good party they may want to combine their wealth to buy something maybe they only have that one tank that fighter or paladin and um, they want maybe to try to upgrade their armor maybe they can tr maybe they can pull enough money together in and if they don't have enough money for that something that they want to do if they're all putting in for it collectively and they're a good group they just you know rescue the town and help them out maybe drop that price a little bit you know leave them a couple gold but you know depending on how they do and what they want to do you know how well they cooperate you know you're flexible like I said, your game you know maybe not full plate mail but you know something um, or if they want to go health potion maybe put two health potions in stock at wherever whatever it is you want to do and at that point you know so they got their five gold reward from um, the mayor and their celebration at this point I would say give them a day two days three days even um, you can make it a, a Friday and say Friday Saturday and Sunday they have free room and board at the end all the beer they can drink all the food um, and at this point it would be uh, you know you're they're done with that session that's your session zero um, so session zero is over and at this point you can ask that you can either kind of infer from how they acted and how they did what step you want to go next if you're a new DM and you're not quite comfortable enough creating a homebrew there are plenty of beginner uh, campaigns that you can get uh, you can get them off of Amazon or at your local uh, gaming store um, and you can pick them up there are other one shots that you can go over uh, which I will go over in other videos um, and um, other campaign starters so that's your session zero talk to your players see what they like what they didn't like you know if they said you know that was fun uh, we want to RP more or we want to you know be those glorious save the villages kind of deal then maybe you want to pick a campaign that's more outdoorsy and more broad you know discussions maybe even political intrigue in it if they just said hey we love that we just want to keep on killing goblins and straight murdering things most campaigns have plenty of killing going on uh, which you can easily emphasize and expand on the dungeons a little bit um, so again up to you discuss it with your players you know make sure that you're doing what they want and what you want uh, because if you're not enjoying if if they're playing something that you don't know well you're not going to enjoy it and that's going to show and it's going to bring everything down um, if they're playing what you enjoy and they don't want to do it then you might not have that group next week or the week after that or whoever it is um, so that's the end of your session zero 
the uh, the next video I'm going to do in this series is going to be um, the beginning of the D&D starter set, which is the Lost Mine of Fendelver. Uh, I will be doing other ones um, uh, in different videos, but this is kind of like the main series. This is, like I said, for new DMs, and I really love the starter set. I've ran it a few times. Uh, I think it's an excellent choice. You can find it for dirt cheap on Amazon or probably at your local store, uh, bookstore or game store too. Um, you can get it from anywhere from $11 to $20 depending on where you go. It comes with just about everything you need. So that's the one that I'll be doing in my next video in this series. I will be doing other videos uh, again on homebrew rules, uh, tips and tricks, other tips and tricks. Um, different kinds of information depending on you know what I think of and what kind of feedback I get so thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching I don't edit my videos very well uh, I'm very stream of thought so there's gonna be a lot of what I just did there in them um, but I like stream of thought because I think better uh, what you're gonna have to do as a dungeon master because it's gonna be a lot of improv and you don't know what they are going to do at any given time so except dish maybe this one shot uh, session zero so um, anyways this is the end of my video I hope you enjoyed it um, if you have any questions or comments or want uh, you know different videos explaining maybe how the way I run things uh, expanding on this uh, please comment down below let me know what you want to hear um, I plan on making a lot of these videos, so I will probably get to it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please remember to subscribe to my channel, like it, share it. Not with your players. That would probably be a mistake. Um, so, anyone but them. And uh, I'll see you next time.